preface to samson agonistes this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by martin geeson samson agonistes by john milton the preface of that sort of dramatic poem which is called tragedy tragedy as it was anciently composed hath been ever held the gravest moralist and most profitable of all other poems therefore said by aristotle to be of power by raising pity and fear or terror to purge the mind of those and such like passions that is to temper and reduce them to just measure with a kind of delight stirred up by reading or seeing those passions well imitated nor is nature wanting in her own effects to make good his assertion for so in physic things of melancholic hue and quality are used against melancholy sour against sour salt to remove salt humours hence philosophers and other gravest writers as cicero plutarch and others frequently cite out of tragic poets both to adorn and illustrate their discourse the apostle paul himself thought it not unworthy to insert a verse of euripides into the text of holy scripture one corinthians chapter fifteen verse thirty three and pareus commenting on the revelation divides the whole book as a tragedy into acts distinguished each by a chorus of heavenly harpings and song between heretofore men in highest dignity have laboured not a little to be thought able to compose a tragedy of that honour dionysius the elder was no less ambitious than before of his attaining to the tyranny augustus caesar also had begun his ajax but unable to please his own judgment with what he had begun left it unfinished seneca the philosopher is by some thought the author of those tragedies at least the best of them that go under that name gregory nazianzen a father of the church thought it not unbeseeming the sanctity of his person to write a tragedy which he entitled christ's suffering this is mentioned to vindicate tragedy from the small esteem or rather infamy which in the account of many it undergoes at this day with other common interludes happening through the poet's error of intermixing comic stuff with tragic sadness and gravity or introducing trivial and vulgar persons which by all judicious hath been counted absurd and brought in without discretion corruptly to gratify the people and though ancient tragedy use no prologue yet using sometimes in case of self-defence or explanation that which martial calls an epistle in behalf of this tragedy coming forth after the ancient manner much different from what among us passes for best thus much beforehand may be epistled that chorus is here introduced after the greek manner not ancient only but modern and still in use among the italians 
in the modelling therefore of this poem with good reason the ancients and italians are rather followed as of much more authority and fame the measure of verse used in the chorus is of all sorts called by the greeks monostrophic or rather apolelumenon without regard had to strophe antistrophe or epod which were a kind of stanzas framed only for the music then used with the chorus that sung not essential to the poem and therefore not material or being divided into stanzas or pauses they may be called alaiostrofa division into act and scene referring chiefly to the stage to which this work never was intended is here omitted it suffices if the whole drama be found not produced beyond the fifth act of the style and uniformity and that commonly called the plot whether intricate or explicit which is nothing indeed but such economy or disposition of the fable as may stand best with verisimilitude and decorum they only will best judge who are not unacquainted with aeschylus sophocles and euripides the three tragic poets unequalled yet by any and the best rule to all who endeavour to write tragedy the circumscription of time wherein the whole drama begins and ends is according to ancient rule and best example within the space of twenty-four hours the argument samson made captive blind and now in the prison at gaza there to labour as in a common workhouse on a festival day in the general cessation from labour comes forth into the open air to a place nigh somewhat retired there to sit a while and bemoan his condition where he happens at length to be visited by certain friends and equals of his tribe which make the chorus who seek to comfort him what they can then by his old father manoa who endeavours the like and withal tells him his purpose to procure his liberty by ransom lastly that this feast was proclaimed by the philistines as a day of thanksgiving for their deliverance from the hands of samson which yet more troubles him manoa then departs to prosecute his endeavour with the philistian lords for samson's redemption who in the meanwhile is visited by other persons and lastly by a public officer to require coming to the feast before the lords and people to play or show his strength in their presence he at first refuses dismissing the public officer with absolute denial to come at length persuaded inwardly that this was from god he yields to go along with him who came now the second time with great threatenings to fetch him the chorus yet remaining on the place manoa returns full of joyful hope to procure ere long his son's deliverance in the midst of which discourse an hebrew comes in haste confusedly at first and afterward more distinctly relating the catastrophe what samson had done to the philistines and by accident to himself wherewith the tragedy ends 
the persons samson manoa the father of samson dalila his wife arafa of gath public officer messenger chorus of danites end of the preface recording by martin geeson in hazelmere surrey section one of samson agonistes this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by martin geeson samson agonistes by john milton section one the scene before the prison in gaza samson the chorus a little onward lend thy guiding hand to these dark steps a little further on for yonder bank hath choice of sun or shade there i am wont to sit when any chance relieves me from my task of servile toil daily in the common prison else enjoined me where i a prisoner chained scarce freely draw the air imprisoned also close and damp unwholesome draught but here i feel amends the breath of heaven fresh blowing pure and sweet with dayspring born here leave me to respire this day a solemn feast the people hold to dagon their sea idol and forbid laborious works unwillingly this rest their superstition yields me hence with leave retiring from the popular noise i seek this unfrequented place to find some ease ease to the body some none to the mind from restless thoughts that like a deadly swarm of hornets armed no sooner found alone but rush upon me thronging and present times past what once i was and what am now oh wherefore was my birth from heaven foretold twice by an angel who at last in sight of both my parents all in flames ascended from off the altar where an offering burned as in a fiery column charioting his godlike presence and from some great act or benefit revealed to abraham's race why was my breeding ordered and prescribed as of a person separate to god designed for great exploits if i must die betrayed captived and both my eyes put out made of my enemies the scorn and gaze to grind in brazen fetters and a task with this heaven-gifted strength o oh, glorious strength put to the labour of a beast debased lower than bond-slave promise was that i should israel from philistian yoke deliver ask for this great deliverer now and find him eyeless in gaza at the mill with slaves himself in bonds under philistian yoke yet stay let me not rashly call in doubt divine prediction what if all foretold had been fulfilled but through mine own default 
whom have i to complain of but myself who this high gift of strength committed to me in what part lodged how easily bereft me under the seal of silence could not keep but weakly to a woman must reveal it or come with importunity and tears oh impotence of mind in body strong but what is strength without a double share of wisdom vast unwieldy burdensome proudly secure yet liable to fall by weakest subtleties not made to rule but to subserve where wisdom bears command god when he gave me strength to show withal how slight the gift was hung it in my hair but peace i must not quarrel with the will of highest dispensation which herein haply had ends above my reach to know suffices that to me strength is my bane and proves the source of all my miseries so many and so huge that each apart would ask a life to wail but chief of all o oh, loss of sight of thee i most complain blind among enemies o oh, worse than chains dungeon or beggary or decrepit age light the prime work of god to me is extinct and all her various objects of delight annulled which might in part my grief have eased inferior to the vilest now become of man or worm the vilest here excel me they creep yet see i dark in light exposed to daily fraud contempt abuse and wrong within doors or without still as a fool in power of others never in my own scarce half i seem to live dead more than half o oh, dark 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 amid the blaze of noon irrecoverably dark total eclipse without all hope of day o oh, first created beam and thou great word let there be light and light was over all why am i thus bereaved thy prime decree the sun to me is dark and silent as the moon when she deserts the night hid in her vacant interlunar cave since light so necessary is to life and almost life itself if it be true that light is in the soul she all in every part why was the sight to such a tender ball as the eye confined so obvious and so easy to be quenched and not as feeling through all parts diffused that she might look at will through every pore then had i not been thus exiled from light as in the land of darkness yet in light to live a life half dead a living death and buried but oh yet more miserable myself my sepulchre a moving grave buried yet not exempt by privilege of death and burial from worst of other evils pains and wrongs 
but made hereby obnoxious more to all the miseries of life life in captivity among inhuman foes but who are these for with joint pace i hear the tread of many feet steering this way perhaps my enemies who come to stare at my affliction and perhaps to insult their daily practice to afflict me more this this is he softly a while let us not break in upon him oh change beyond report thought or belief see how he lies at random carelessly diffused with languished head unpropped as one past hope abandoned and by himself given over in slavish habit ill-fitted weeds o'erworn and soiled or do my eyes misrepresent can this be he that heroic that renowned irresistible samson whom unarmed no strength of man or fiercest wild beast could withstand who tore the lion as the lion tears the kid ran on embattled armies clad in iron and weaponless himself made arms ridiculous useless the forgery of brazen shield and spear the hammered cuirass calibian tempered steel and frock of mail adamantian proof but safest he who stood aloof when insupportably his foot advanced in scorn of their proud arms and warlike tools spurned them to death my troops the bold ascalonite fled from his lion ramp old warriors turned their plated backs under his heel or grovelling soiled their crested helmets in the dust then with what trivial weapon came to hand the jaw of a dead ass his sword of bone a thousand foreskins fell the flower of palestine in ramath lechi famous to this day then by main force pulled up and on his shoulders bore the gates of Azza, post and massy bar up to the hill by hebron seat of giants old no journey of a sabbath day and loaded so like whom the gentiles feign to bear up heaven oh, which shall i first bewail thy bondage or lost sight prison within prison inseparably dark thou art become o oh, worst imprisonment the dungeon of thyself thy soul which men enjoying sight oft without cause complain imprisoned now indeed in real darkness of the body dwells shut up from outward light to incorporate with gloomy night for inward light alas puts forth no visual beam o oh, mirror of our fickle state since man on earth unparalleled the rarer thy example stands by how much from the top of wondrous glory strongest of mortal men to lowest pitch of abject fortune thou art fallen for him i reckon not in high estate whom long descent of birth or the sphere of fortune raises but thee whose strength while virtue was her mate might have subdued the earth 
universally crowned with highest praises i hear the sound of words their sense the air dissolves unjointed ere it reach my ear he speaks let us draw nigh matchless in might the glory late of israel now the grief we come thy friends and neighbours not unknown from eshtal and zora's fruitful vale to visit or bewail thee or if better counsel or consolation we may bring salve to thy sores apt words have power to swage the tumours of a troubled mind and are as balm to festered wounds end of section one recording by martin geeson in hazelmere surrey section two of samson agonistes this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Martin Giessen. Samson Agonistes by John Milton. Section 2. Samson. The Chorus. Your coming, friends, revives me for I learn now of my own experience, not by talk, how counterfeit a coin they are, who friends bear in their superscription. Of the most I would be understood. In prosperous days they swarm, but in adverse withdraw their head not to be found, though sought we see o oh friends how many evils have enclosed me round yet that which was the worst now least afflicts me blindness for had i sight confused with shame how could i once look up or heave the head who like a foolish pilot have shipwrecked my vessel trusted to me from above gloriously rigged and for a word a tear fool have divulged the secret gift of god to a deceitful woman tell me friends am i not sung and proverbed for a fool in every street do they not say how well are come upon him his deserts yet why immeasurable strength they might behold in me of wisdom nothing more than mean this with the other should at least have paired these two proportioned ill drove me transverse tax not divine disposal wisest men have erred and by bad women been deceived and shall again pretend they ne'er so wise deject not then so overmuch thyself who hast of sorrow thy full load besides yet truth to say i have oft heard men wonder why thou shouldst wed philistian women rather than of thine own tribe fairer or as fair at least of thy own nation and as noble the first i saw at timna and she pleased me not my parents that i sought to wed the daughter of an infidel they knew not that what i motioned was of god i knew from intimate impulse and therefore urged the marriage on that by occasion hence i might begin israel's deliverance the work to which i was divinely called she proving false the next i took to wife 
oh that i never had fond wish too late was in the vale of sorek dalila that specious monster my accomplished snare i thought it lawful from my former act and the same end still watching to oppress israel's oppressors of what now i suffer she was not the prime cause but i myself who vanquished with a peal of words oh weakness gave up my fort of silence to a woman in seeking just occasion to provoke the philistine thy country's enemy thou never wast remiss i hear thee witness yet israel still serves with all his sons that fault i take not on me but transfer on israel's governors and heads of tribes who seeing those great acts which god had done singly by me against their conquerors acknowledged not or not at all considered deliverance offered i on the other side used no ambition to commend my deeds the deeds themselves though mute spoke loud the doer but they persisted deaf and would not seem to count them things worth notice till at length their lords the philistines with gathered powers entered judea seeking me who then safe to the rock of etham was retired not flying but forecasting in what place to set upon them what advantage best meanwhile the men of judah to prevent the harass of their land beset me round i willingly on some conditions came into their hands and they as gladly yield me to the uncircumcised a welcome prey bound with two cords but cords to me were threads touched with the flame on their whole host i flew unarmed and with a trivial weapon felled their choicest youth they only lived who fled had judah that day joined or one whole tribe they had by this possessed the towers of gath and lorded over them whom now they serve but what more oft in nations grown corrupt and by their vices brought to servitude than to love bondage more than liberty bondage with ease than strenuous liberty and to despise or envy or suspect whom god hath of his special favour raised as their deliverer if he ought begin how frequent to desert him and at last to heap ingratitude on worthiest deeds thy words to my remembrance bring how succoth and the fort of penuel their great deliverer contemned the matchless gideon in pursuit of madian and her vanquished kings and how ingrateful ephraim not worse than by his shield and spear had dealt with jephthah who by argument defended israel from the ammonite had not his prowess quelled their pride in that sore battle when so many died without reprieve adjudged to death for want of well pronouncing shiboleth of such examples add me to the roll me easily indeed mine may neglect but god's proposed deliverance not so just are the ways of god and justifiable to men unless there be who think not 
god at all if any be they walk obscure for of such doctrine never was their school but the heart of the fool and no man therein doctor but himself yet more there be who doubt his ways not just as to his own edicts found contradicting than give the reins to wandering thought regardless of his glory's diminution till by their own perplexities involved they ravel more still less resolved but never find self-satisfying solution as if they would confine the interminable and tie him to his own prescript who made our laws to bind us not himself and hath full right to exempt whomso it pleases him by choice from national obstriction without taint of sin or legal debt for with his own laws he can best dispense he would not else who never wanted means nor in respect of the enemy just cause to set his people free have prompted this heroic nazarite against his vow of strictest purity to seek in marriage that fallacious bride unclean unchaste down reason then at least vain reasonings down though reason here aver that moral verdict quits her of unclean unchaste was subsequent her stain not his but see here comes thy reverend sire with careful steps locks white as down old manoa advise forthwith how thou oughtest to receive him ay me another inward grief awaked with mention of that name renews the assault end of section two recording by martin geeson in hazelmere surrey Section three of Samson Agonistes. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Martin Geeson. Samson Agonistes by John Milton. Section three. Manoa. Chorus. Samson brethren and men of dan for such ye seem though in this uncouth place if old respect as i suppose towards your once gloried friend my son now captive hither hath informed your younger feet while mine cast back with age came lagging after say if he be here as signal now in low dejected state as erst in highest behold him where he lies o oh, miserable change is this the man that invincible samson far renowned the dread of israel's foes who with a strength equivalent to angels walked their streets none offering fight who single combatant duelled their armies ranked in proud array himself an army now unequal match to save himself against a coward armed at one spear's length o oh, ever failing trust in mortal strength and o oh, what not in man deceivable and vain nay what thing good prayed for but often proves our woe our bane 
i prayed for children and thought barrenness in wedlock a reproach i gained a son and such a son as all men hailed me happy who would be now a father in my stead oh wherefore did god grant me my request and as a blessing with such pomp adorned why are his gifts desirable to tempt our earnest prayers then given with solemn hand as graces draw a scorpion's tail behind for this did the angel twice descend for this ordained thy nurture holy as of a plant select and sacred glorious for a while the miracle of men then in an hour ensnared assaulted overcome led bound thy foe's derision captive poor and blind into a dungeon thrust to work with slaves alas methinks whom god hath chosen once to worthier deeds if he through frailty err he should not so o'erwhelm and as a thrall subject him to so foul indignities be it but for honour's sake of former deeds appoint not heavenly disposition father nothing of all these evils hath befallen me but justly i myself have brought them on sole author i sole cause if aught seem vile as vile hath been my folly who hath profaned the mystery of god given me under pledge of vow and hath betrayed it to a woman a canaanite my faithless enemy this well i knew nor was at all surprised but warned by oft experience did not she of timna first betray me and reveal the secret wrested from me in her height of nuptial love professed carrying it straight to them who had corrupted her my spies and rivals in this other was there found more faith who also in her prime of love spousal embraces vitiated with gold though offered only by the scent conceived her spurious first-born treason against me thrice she essayed with flattering prayers and sighs and amorous reproaches to win from me my capital secret in what part my strength lay stored in what part summed that she might know thrice i deluded her and turned to sport her importunity each time perceiving how openly and with what impudence she purposed to betray me and which was worse than undissembled hate with what contempt she sought to make me traitor to myself yet the fourth time when mustering all her wiles with blandished parleys feminine assaults tongue batteries she surceased not day nor night to storm me overwatched and wearied out at times when men seek most repose and rest i yielded and unlocked her all my heart who with a grain of manhood well resolved might easily have shook off all her snares but foul effeminacy held me yoked her bond-slave 
oh indignity oh blot to honour and religion servile mind rewarded well with servile punishment the base degree to which i now am fallen these rags this grinding is not yet so base as was my former servitude ignoble unmanly ignominious infamous true slavery and that blindness worse than this that saw not how degenerately i served i cannot praise thy marriage choices son rather approved them not but thou didst plead divine impulsion prompting how thou mightst find some occasion to infest our foes i state not that this i am sure our foes found soon occasion thereby to make thee their captive and their triumph thou the sooner temptation found'st or over potent charms to violate the sacred trust of silence deposited within thee which to have kept tacit was in thy power true and thou hearst enough and more the burden of that fault bitterly hast thou paid and still art paying that rigid score a worse thing yet remains this day the philistines a popular feast here celebrate in gaza and proclaim great pomp and sacrifice and praises loud to dagon as their god who hath delivered thee samson bound and blind into their hands them out of thine who slewest them many a slain so dagon shall be magnified and god besides whom is no god compared with idols disglorified blasphemed and had in scorn by the idolatrous rout amidst their wine which to have come to pass by means of thee samson of all thy sufferings think the heaviest of all reproach the most with shame that ever could have befallen thee and thy father's house father i do acknowledge and confess that i this honour i this pomp have brought to dagon and advanced his praises high among the heathen round to god have brought dishonour obloquy and oped the mouths of idolists and atheists have brought scandal to israel diffidence of god and doubt in feeble hearts propense enough before to waver or fall off and join with idols which is my chief affliction shame and sorrow the anguish of my soul that suffers not mine eye to harbour sleep or thoughts to rest this only hope relieves me that the strife with me hath end all the contest is now twixt god and dagon dagon hath presumed me overthrown to enter lists with god his deity comparing and preferring before the god of abraham he he sure will not connive or linger thus provoked but will arise and his great name assert dagon must stoop and shall ere long receive such a discomfort as shall quite despoil him of all these boasted trophies won on me 
and with confusion blank his worshippers with cause this hope relieves thee and these words i as a prophecy receive for god nothing more certain will not long defer to vindicate the glory of his name against all competition nor will long endure it doubtful whether god be lord or dargon but for thee what shall be done thou must not in the meanwhile here forgot lie in this miserable loathsome plight neglected i already have made way to some philistian lords with whom to treat about thy ransom well they may by this have satisfied their utmost of revenge by pains and slaveries worse than death inflicted on thee who now no more canst do them harm spare that proposal father spare the trouble of that solicitation let me here as i deserve pay on my punishment and expiate if possible my crime shameful garrulity to have revealed secrets of men the secrets of a friend how heinous had the fact been how deserving contempt and scorn of all to be excluded all friendship and avoided as a blab the mark of fool set on his front but i god's counsel have not kept his holy secret presumptuously have published impiously weakly at least and shamefully a sin that gentiles in their parables condemn to their abyss and horrid pains confined end of section three recording by martin geeson in hazelmere surrey section four of Samson Agonistes. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Martin Giessen. Samson Agonistes by John Milton. Section four. Manoa. Samson. Chorus. Be penitent, and for thy fault contrite, But act not in thy own affliction, son. Repent the sin, but if the punishment thou canst avoid, Self-preservation bids, or the execution leave to high disposal, And let another hand, not thine, exact thy penal forfeit from thyself perhaps god will relent and quit thee all his debt who ever more approves and more accepts best pleased with humble and filial submission him who imploring mercy sues for life than whose self rigorous chooses death as due which argues over just and self displeased for self offence more than for god offended reject not then what offered means who knows but god hath set before us to return thee home to thy country and his sacred house where thou mayst bring thy offerings to avert his further ire with prayers and vows renewed his pardon i implore but as for life to what end should i seek it when in strength all mortals i excelled and great in hopes with youthful courage and magnanimous thoughts of 
birth from heaven foretold and high exploits full of divine instinct after some proof of acts indeed heroic far beyond the sons of anak famous now and blazed fearless of danger like a petty god i walked about admired of all and dreaded on hostile ground none daring my affront then swollen with pride into the snare i fell of fair fallacious looks venereal trains softened with pleasure and voluptuous life at length to lay my head and hallowed pledge of all my strength in the lascivious lap of a deceitful concubine who shore me like a tame weather all my precious fleece then turned me out ridiculous despoiled shaven and disarmed among my enemies desire of wine and all delicious drinks which many a famous warrior overturns thou couldst repress nor did the dancing ruby sparkling outpowered the flavour or the smell or taste that cheers the hearts of gods and men allure thee from the cool crystalline stream wherever fountain or fresh current flowed against the eastern ray translucent pure with touch ethereal of heaven's fiery rod i drank from the clear milky juice allaying thirst and refreshed nor envied them the grape whose heads that turbulent liquor fills with fumes o oh, madness to think use of strongest wines and strongest drinks our chief support of health when god with these forbidden made choice to rear his mighty champion strong above compare whose drink was only from the liquid brook but what availed this temperance not complete against another object more enticing what boots it at one gate to make defence and at another to let in the foe effeminately vanquished by which means now blind disheartened shamed dishonoured quelled to what can i be useful wherein serve my nation and the work from heaven imposed but to sit idle on the household hearth a burdenous drone to visitants a gaze or pitied object these redundant locks robustious to no purpose clustering down vain monument of strength till length of years and sedentary numbness craze my limbs to a contemptible old age obscure here rather let me drudge and earn my bread till vermin or the draught of servile food consume me and oft invocated death hasten the welcome end of all my pains wilt thou then serve the philistines with that gift which was expressly given thee to annoy them better at home lie bedrid not only idle inglorious unemployed with age outworn but god who caused a fountain at thy prayer from the dry ground to spring thy thirst to allay after the brunt of battle can as easy cause light again within thy eyes to spring wherewith to serve him better than thou hast 
and i persuade me so why else this strength miraculous yet remaining in those locks his might continues in thee not for naught nor shall his wondrous gifts be frustrate thus all otherwise to me my thoughts portend that these dark orbs no more shall treat with light nor the other light of life continue long but yield to double darkness nigh at hand so much i feel my genial spirits droop my hopes all flat nature within me seems in all her functions weary of herself my race of glory run and race of shame and i shall shortly be with them that rest believe not these suggestions which proceed from anguish of the mind and humours black that mingle with thy fancy i however must not omit a father's timely care to prosecute the means of thy deliverance by ransom or how else meanwhile be calm and healing words from these thy friends admit oh that torment should not be confined to the body's wounds and sores with maladies innumerable in heart head breast and reins but must secret passage find to the inmost mind there exercise all his fierce accidents and on her purest spirits prey as on entrails joints and limbs with answerable pains but more intense though void of corporal sense my griefs not only pain me as a lingering disease but finding no redress ferment and rage nor less than wounds immedicable rankle and fester and gangrene to black mortification thoughts my tormentors armed with deadly stings mangle my apprehensive tenderest parts exasperate exulcerate and raise dire inflammation which no cooling herb or medicinal liquor can assuage nor breath of vernal air from snowy alp sleep hath forsook and given me o'er to death's benumbing opium as my only cure thence faintings swoonings of despair and sense of heaven's desertion i was his nursling once and choice delight his destined from the womb promised by heavenly message twice descending under his special eye abstemious i grew up and thrived amain he led me on to mightiest deeds above the nerve of mortal arm against the uncircumcised our enemies but now hath cast me off as never known and to those cruel enemies whom i by his appointment had provoked left me all helpless with the irreparable loss of sight reserved alive to be repeated the subject of their cruelty or scorn nor am i in the list of them that hope hopeless are all my evils all remediless this one prayer yet remains might i be heard no long petition 
speedy death the close of all my miseries and the balm many are the sayings of the wise in ancient and in modern books enrolled extolling patience as the truest fortitude and to the bearing well of all calamities all chances incident to man's frail life consolatories writ with studied argument and much persuasion sought lenient of grief and anxious thought but with the afflicted in his pangs their sound little prevails or rather seems a tune harsh and of dissonant mood from his complaint unless he feel within some source of consolation from above secret refreshings that repair his strength and fainting spirits uphold god of our fathers what is man that thou towards him with hand so various or might i say contrarious temperest thy providence through his short course not evenly as thou rulest the angelic orders and inferior creatures mute irrational and brute nor do i name of men the common rout that wandering loose about grow up and perish as the summer fly heads without name no more remembered but such as thou hast solemnly elected with gifts and graces eminently adorned to some great work thy glory and people's safety which in part they effect yet toward these thus dignified thou oft amidst their height of noon changest thy countenance and thy hand with no regard of highest favours past from thee on them or them to thee of service nor only dost degrade them or remit to life obscured which were a fair dismission but throwst them lower than thou didst exalt them high unseemly falls in human eye too grievous for the trespass or omission oft leav'st them to the hostile sword of heathen and profane their carcasses to dogs and fowls a prey or else captived or to the unjust tribunals and a change of times and condemnation of the ingrateful multitude if these they scape perhaps in poverty with sickness and disease thou bowest them down painful diseases and deformed in crude old age though not disordinate yet causeless suffering the punishment of dissolute days in fine just or unjust alike seem miserable for oft alike both come to evil end so deal not with this once thy glorious champion the image of thy strength and mighty minister what do i beg how hast thou dealt already behold him in this state calamitous and turn his labours for thou canst to peaceful end but who is this what thing of sea or land female of sex it seems that so bedecked ornate and gay comes this way sailing like a stately ship of tarsus bound for the isles of javan or gadir with all her bravery on and tackle trim sails filled and streamers waving courted by all the winds that hold them play 
an amber scent of odorous perfume her harbinger a damsel train behind some rich philistian matron she may seem and now at nearer view no other certain than dalila thy wife my wife my traitress let her not come near me yet on she moves now stands and eyes thee fixed about to have spoke but now with head declined like a fair flower surcharged with dew she weeps and words addressed seem into tears dissolved wetting the borders of her silken veil but now again she makes address to speak end of section four recording by martin geeson in hazelmere surrey section five of samson agonistes this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by martin geeson samson agonistes by john milton section five dalila samson with doubtful feet and wavering resolution i came still dreading thy displeasure samson which to have merited without excuse i cannot but acknowledge yet if tears may expiate though the fact more evil drew in the perverse event than i foresaw my penance hath not slackened though my pardon no way assured but conjugal affection prevailing over fear and timorous doubt hath led me on desirous to behold once more thy face and know of thy estate if aught in my ability may serve to lighten what thou sufferest and appease thy mind with what amends is in my power though late yet in some part to recompense my rash but more unfortunate misdeed out out hyena these are thy wounded arts and arts of every woman false like thee to break all faith all vows deceive betray then as repentant to submit beseech and reconcilement move with feigned remorse confess and promise wonders in her change not truly penitent but chief to try her husband how far urged his patience bears his virtue or weakness which way to assail then with more cautious and instructed skill again transgresses and again submits that wisest and best men full oft beguiled with goodness principled not to reject the penitent but ever to forgive are drawn to wear out miserable days entangled with a poisonous bosom snake if not by quick destruction cut off as i by thee to ages an example yet hear me samson not that i endeavour to lessen or extenuate my offence but that on the other side if it be weighed by itself with aggravations not surcharged or else with just allowance counterpoised i may if possible thy pardon find the easier towards me 
or thy hatred less first granting as i do it was a weakness in me but incident to all our sex curiosity inquisitive importune of secrets then with like infirmity to publish them both common female faults was it not weakness also to make known for importunity that is for naught wherein consisted all thy strength and safety to what i did thou showedst me first the way but i to enemies revealed and should not nor shouldst thou have trusted that to woman's frailty ere i to thee thou to thyself wast cruel let weakness then with weakness come to parl so near related or the same of kind thine forgive mine that men may censure thine the gentler if severely thou exact not more strength from me than in thyself was found and what if love which thou interpret'st hate the jealousy of love powerful of sway in human hearts nor less in mine towards thee caused what i did i saw thee mutable of fancy feared lest one day thou wouldst leave me as her at timna sought by all means therefore how to endear and hold thee to me firmest no better way i saw than by importuning to learn thy secrets get into my power the key of strength and safety thou wilt say why then revealed i was assured by those who tempted me that nothing was designed against thee but safe custody and hold that made for me i knew that liberty would draw thee forth to perilous enterprises while i at home sate full of cares and fears wailing thy absence in my widowed bed here i should still enjoy thee day and night mine and love's prisoner not the philistines whole to myself unhazarded abroad fearless at home of partners in my love these reasons in love's law have passed for good though fond and reasonless to some perhaps and love hath oft well-meaning wrought much woe yet always pity or pardon hath obtained be not unlike all others not austere as thou art strong inflexible as steel if thou in strength all mortals dost exceed in uncompassionate anger do not so End of section five. Recording by Martin Giesem in Hazelmere, Surrey. Section six of Samson Agonistes. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Martin Giesem. Samson Agonistes by john milton section six samson dalila how cunningly the sorceress displays her own transgressions to upbraid me mine that malice not repentance brought thee hither by this appears i gave thou sayest the example i led the way bitter reproach but true i to myself was false ere thou to me 
such pardon therefore as i give my folly take to thy wicked deed which when thou seest impartial self-severe inexorable thou wilt renounce thy seeking and much rather confess it feigned weakness is thy excuse and i believe it weakness to resist philistian gold if weakness may excuse what murderer what traitor parricide incestuous sacrilegious but may plead it all wickedness is weakness that plea therefore with god or man will gain thee no remission but love constrained thee call it furious rage to satisfy thy lust love seeks to have love my love how couldst thou hope who took'st the way to raise in me inexpiable hate knowing as needs i must by thee betrayed in vain thou strivest to cover shame with shame or by evasions thy crime uncoverst more since thou determinest weakness for no plea in man or woman though to thy own condemning hear what assaults i had what snares besides what sieges girt me round ere i consented which might have awed the best resolved of men the constantest to have yielded without blame it was not gold as to my charge thou layest that wrought with me thou knowest the magistrates and princes of my country came in person solicited commanded threatened urged adjured by all the bonds of civil duty and of religion pressed how just it was how honourable how glorious to entrap a common enemy who had destroyed such numbers of our nation and the priest was not behind but ever at my ear preaching how meritorious with the gods it would be to ensnare an irreligious dishonourer of dagon what had i to oppose against such powerful arguments only my love of thee held long debate and combated in silence all these reasons with hard contest at length that grounded maxim so rife and celebrated in the mouths of wisest men that to the public good private respects must yield with grave authority took full possession of me and prevailed virtue as i thought truth duty so enjoining i thought where all thy circling wiles would end in feigned religion smooth hypocrisy but had thy love still odiously pretended been as it ought sincere it would have taught thee far other reasonings brought forth other deeds i before all the daughters of my tribe and of my nation chose thee from among my enemies loved thee as too well thou knewest too well unbosomed all my secrets to thee not out of levity but overpowered by thy request who could deny thee nothing yet now am judged an enemy why then didst thou at first receive me for thy husband then as since then thy country's foe professed being once a wife for me thou wast to leave parents and country 
nor was i their subject nor under their protection but my own thou mine not theirs if aught against my life thy country sought of thee it sought unjustly against the law of nature law of nations no more thy country but an impious crew of men conspiring to uphold their state by worse than hostile deeds violating the ends for which our country is a name so dear not therefore to be obeyed but zeal moved thee to please thy gods thou didst it gods unable to acquit themselves and prosecute their foes but by ungodly deeds the contradiction of their own deity gods cannot be less therefore to be pleased obeyed or feared these false pretexts and varnished colours failing bear in thy guilt how foul must thou appear in argument with men a woman ever goes by the worse whatever be her cause for want of words no doubt or lack of breath witness when i was worried with thy peals i was a fool too rash and quite mistaken in what i thought would have succeeded best let me obtain forgiveness of thee samson afford me place to show what recompense towards thee i intend for what i have misdone misguided only what remains past cure bear not too sensibly nor still insist to afflict thyself in vain though sight be lost life yet hath many solaces enjoyed where other senses want not their delights at home in leisure and domestic ease exempt from many a care and chance to which eyesight exposes daily men abroad i to the lords will intercede not doubting their favourable ear that i may fetch thee from forth this loathsome prison-house to abide with me where my redoubled love and care with nursing diligence to me glad office may ever tend about thee to old age with all things grateful cheered and so supplied that what by me thou hast lost thou least shalt miss no no of my condition take no care it fits not thou and i long since are twain nor think me so unwary or accursed to bring my feet again into the snare where once i have been caught i know thy trains though dearly to my cost thy gins and toils thy fair enchanted cup and warbling charms no more on me have power their force is nulled so much of adder's wisdom i have learnt to fence my ear against thy sorceries if in my flower of youth and strength when all men loved honoured feared me thou alone could hate me thy husband slight me sell me and forego me how wouldst thou use me now blind and thereby deceivable in most things as a child helpless thence easily contemned and scorned and last neglected how wouldst thou insult when i must live uxorious to thy will 
in perfect thraldom how again betray me bearing my words and doings to the lords to gloss upon and censuring frown or smile this jail i count the house of liberty to thine whose doors my feet shall never enter let me approach at least and touch thy hand not for thy life lest fierce remembrance wake my sudden rage to tear thee joint by joint at distance i forgive thee go with that bewail thy falsehood and the pious works it hath brought forth to make thee memorable among illustrious women faithful wives cherish thy hastened widowhood with the gold of matrimonial treason so farewell i see thou art implacable more deaf to prayers than winds and seas yet winds to seas are reconciled at length and sea to shore thy anger unappeasable still rages eternal tempest never to be calmed why do i humble thus myself and suing for peace reap nothing but repulse and hate bid go with evil omen and the brand of infamy upon my name denounced to mix with thy concernments i desist henceforth nor too much disapprove my own fame if not double-faced is double-mouthed and with contrary blast proclaims most deeds on both his wings one black the other white bears greatest names in his wild airy flight my name perhaps among the circumcised in dan in judah and the bordering tribes to all posterity may stand defamed with malediction mentioned and the blot of falsehood most unconjugal traduced but in my country where i most desire in ekron gaza ashdod and in gath i shall be named among the famousest of women sung at solemn festivals living and dead recorded who to save her country from a fierce destroyer chose above the faith of wedlock bands my tomb with odours visited and annual flowers not less renowned than in mount ephraim jael who with inhospitable guile smote sisera sleeping through the temples nailed nor shall i count it heinous to enjoy the public marks of honour and reward conferred upon me for the piety which to my country i was judged to have shown at this who ever envies or repines i leave him to his lot and like my own End of section six. Recording by Martin Geeson in Hazelmere, Surrey. Section seven of Samson Agonistes. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Martin Geeson samson agonistes by john milton section seven chorus samson harapha she's gone a manifest serpent by her sting discovered in the end till now concealed 
so let her go god sent her to debase me and aggravate my folly who committed to such a viper his most sacred trust of secrecy my safety and my life yet beauty though injurious hath strange power after offence returning to regain love once possessed nor can be easily repulsed without much inward passion felt and secret sting of amorous remorse love quarrels oft in pleasing concord end not wedlock treachery endangering life it is not virtue wisdom valour wit strength comeliness of shape or amplest merit that woman's love can win or long inherit but what it is hard is to say harder to hit which way soever men refer it much like thy riddle samson in one day or seven though one should musing sit if any of these or all the timnian bride had not so soon preferred thy paranymph worthless to thee compared successor in thy bed nor both so loosely disallied their nuptials nor this last so treacherously had shorn the fatal harvest of thy head is it for that such outward ornament was lavished on their sex that inward gifts were left for haste unfinished judgment scant capacity not raised to apprehend or value what is best in choice but oftest to affect the wrong or was too much of self-love mixed of constancy no root infixed that either they love nothing or not long whate'er it be to wisest men and best seeming at first all heavenly under virgin veil soft modest meek demure once joined the contrary she proves a thorn intestine far within defensive arms a cleaving mischief in his way to virtue adverse and turbulent or by her charms draws him awry enslaved with dotage and his sense depraved to folly and shameful deeds which ruin ends what pilot so expert but needs must wreck embarked with such a steer's mate at the helm favoured of heaven who finds one virtuous rarely found that in domestic good combines happy that house his way to peace is smooth but virtue which breaks through all opposition and all temptation can remove most shines and most is acceptable above therefore god's universal law gave to the man despotic power over his female in due awe nor from that right to part an hour smile she or lower so shall he least confusion draw on his whole life not swayed by female usurpation nor dismayed but had we best retire i see a storm fair days have oft contracted wind and rain but this another kind of tempest brings 
be less abstruse my riddling days are past look now for no enchanting voice nor fear the bait of honeyed words a rougher tongue draws hitherward i know him by his stride the giant harapha of gath his look haughty as is his pile high built and proud comes he in peace what wind hath blown him hither i less conjecture than when first i saw the sumptuous dalila floating this way his habit carries peace his brow defiance or peace or not alike to me he comes his fraught we soon shall know he now arrives i come not samson to condole thy chance as these perhaps yet wish it had not been though for no friendly intent i am of gath men call me harapha of stock renowned as og or anak and the emims old that kiryat haim held thou knowest me now if thou at all art known much i have heard of thy prodigious might and feats performed incredible to me in this displeased that i was never present on the place of these encounters where we might have tried each other's force in camp or listed field and now am come to see of whom such noise hath walked about and each limb to survey if thy appearance answer loud report the way to know when not to see but taste <laughs> dost thou already single me i thought gyves and the mill had tamed thee oh that fortune had brought me to the field where thou art famed to have wrought such wonders with an ass's jaw i should have forced thee soon with other arms or left thy carcass where the ass lay thrown so had the glory of prowess been recovered to palestine won by a philistine from the unforeskinned race of whom thou bearst the highest name for valiant acts that honour certain to have won by mortal duel from thee i lose prevented by thy eyes put out boast not of what thou wouldst have done but do what then thou wouldst thou seize it in thy hand to combat with a blind man i disdain and thou hast need much washing to be touched such usage as your honourable lords afford me assassinated and betrayed who durst not with their whole united powers in fight withstand me single and unarmed nor in the house with chamber ambushes close banded durst attack me no not sleeping till they had hired a woman with their gold breaking her marriage faith to circumvent me therefore without feigned shifts let be assigned some narrow place enclosed where sight may give thee or rather flight no great advantage on me then put on all thy gorgeous arms thy helmet and brigandine of brass thy broad habergeon vaunt brass and greaves and gauntlet 
add thy spear a weaver's beam and seven times folded shield i only with an oaken staff will meet thee and raise such outcries on thy clattered iron which long shall not withhold me from thy head that in a little time while breath remains thee thou oft shalt wish thyself at gath to boast again in safety what thou wouldst have done to samson but shalt never see gath more thou durst not thus disparage glorious arms which greatest heroes have in battle worn their ornament and safety had not spells and black enchantments some magician's art armed thee or charmed thee strong which thou from heaven faintst at thy birth was given thee in thy hair where strength can least abide though all thy hairs were bristles ranged like those that ridge the back of chafed wild boars or ruffled porcupines End of section seven. Recording by Martin Geeson in Hazelmere, Surrey. Section eight of Samson Agonistes. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Martin Geeson. Samson Agonistes by john milton section eight samson arafa chorus i know no spells use no forbidden arts my trust is in the living god who gave me at my nativity this strength diffused no less through all my sinews joints and bones than thine while i preserved these locks unshorn the pledge of my unviolated vow for proof hereof if dagon be thy god go to his temple invocate his aid with solemnest devotion spread before him how highly it concerns his glory now to frustrate and dissolve these magic spells which i to be the power of israel's god avow and challenge dagon to the test offering to combat thee his champion bold with the utmost of his godhead seconded then thou shalt see or rather to thy sorrow soon feel whose god is strongest thine or mine presume not on thy god whate'er he be thee he regards not owns not hath cut off quite from his people and delivered up into thy enemy's hand permitted them to put out both thine eyes and fettered sent thee into the common prison there to grind among the slaves and asses thy comrades as good for nothing else no better service with those thy boisterous locks no worthy match for valour to assail nor by the sword of noble warrior so to stain his honour but by the barber's razor best subdued all these indignities for such they are from thine these evils i deserve and more acknowledge them from god inflicted on me justly yet despair not of his final pardon whose ear is ever open 
and his eye gracious to readmit the suppliant in confidence whereof i once again defy thee to the trial of mortal fight by combat to decide whose god is god thine or whom i with israel's sons adore fair honour that thou dost thy god in trusting he will accept thee to defend his cause a murderer a revolter and a robber tongue doughty giant how dost thou prove me these is not thy nation subject to our lords their magistrates confessed it when they took thee as a league-breaker and delivered bound into our hands for hadst thou not committed notorious murder on those thirty men at ascalon who never did thee harm then like a robber stripped them of their robes the philistines when thou hadst broke the league went up with armed powers thee only seeking to others did no violence nor spoil among the daughters of the philistines i chose a wife which argued me no foe and in your city held my nuptial feast but your ill-meaning politician lords under pretence of bridal friends and guests appointed to await me thirty spies who threatening cruel death constrained the bride to wring from me and tell to them my secret that solved the riddle which i had proposed when i perceived all set on enmity as on my enemies wherever chanced i used hostility and took their spoil to pay my underminers in their coin my nation was subjected to your lords it was the force of conquest force with force is well ejected when the conquered can but i a private person whom my country as a league-breaker gave up bound presumed single rebellion and did hostile acts i was no private but a person raised with strength sufficient and command from heaven to free my country if their servile minds me their deliverer sent would not receive but to their masters gave me up for naught the unworthier they whence to this day they serve i was to do my part from heaven assigned and had performed it if my known offence had not disabled me not all your force these shifts refuted answer thy appellant though by his blindness maimed for high attempts who now defies thee thrice to single fight as a petty enterprise of small enforce with thee a man condemned a slave enrolled due by the law to capital punishment to fight with thee no man of arms will deign camest thou for this vain boaster to survey me to descant on my strength and give thy verdict come nearer part not hence so slight informed but take good heed my hand survey not thee o oh, balzebub can my ears unused hear these dishonours and not render death no man withholds thee nothing from thy hand fear i incurable bring up thy van my heels are fettered but my fist is free 
this insolence other kind of answer fits go baffled coward lest i run upon thee though in these chains bulk without spirit vast and with one buffet lay thy structure low or swing thee in the air then dash thee down to the hazard of thy brains and shattered sides by ashtaroth ere long thou shalt lament these braveries in irons loaden on thee his giantship is gone somewhat crestfallen stalking with less unconscionable strides and lower looks but in a sultry chafe i dread him not nor all his giant brood though fame divulge him father of five sons all of gigantic size goliath chief he will directly to the lords i fear and with malicious counsel stir them up some way or other yet further to afflict thee he must allege some cause and offered fight will not dare mention lest a question rise whether he durst accept the offer or not and that he durst not plain enough appeared much more affliction than already felt they cannot well impose nor i sustain if they intend advantage of my labours the work of many hands which earns my keeping with no small profit daily to my owners but come what will my deadliest foe will prove my speediest friend by death to rid me hence the worst that he can give to me the best yet so it may fall out because their end is hate not help to me it may with mine draw their own ruin who attempt the deed End of section eight. Recording by Martin Geeson in Hazelmere, Surrey. Section nine of Samson Agonistes. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Martin Geeson samson agonistes by john milton section nine chorus samson public officer oh how comely it is and how reviving to the spirits of just men long oppressed when god into the hands of their deliverer puts invincible might to quell the mighty of the earth the oppressor the brute and boisterous force of violent men hardy and industrious to support tyrannic power but raging to pursue the righteous and all such as honour truth he all their ammunition and feats of war defeats with plain heroic magnitude of mind and celestial vigour armed their armories and magazines contemns renders them useless while with winged expedition swift as the lightning glance he executes his errand on the wicked who surprised lose their defence distracted and amazed but patience is more oft the exercise of saints the trial of their fortitude making them each his own deliverer and victor over all that tyranny or fortune can inflict 
either of these is in thy lot samson with might endued above the sons of men but sight bereaved may chance to number thee with those whom patience finally must crown this idol's day hath been to thee no day of rest labouring thy mind more than the working day thy hands and yet perhaps more trouble is behind for i descry this way some other tending in his hand a sceptre or quaint staff he bears comes on amain speed in his look by his habit i discern him now a public officer and now at hand his message will be short and voluble hebrews the prisoner samson here i seek his manacles remark him there he sits samson to thee our lords thus bid me say this day to dagon is a solemn feast with sacrifices triumph pomp and games thy strength they know surpassing human rate and now some public proof thereof require to honour this great feast and great assembly rise therefore with all speed and come along where i will see thee heartened and fresh clad to appear as fits before the illustrious lords thou know'st i am an hebrew therefore tell them our law forbids at their religious rites my presence for that cause i cannot come this answer be assured will not content them have they not sword players and every sort of gymnic artists wrestlers riders runners jugglers and dancers antics mummers mimics but they must pick me out with shackles tired and over laboured at their public mill to make them sport with blind activity do they not seek occasion of new quarrels on my refusal to distress me more or make a game of my calamities return the way thou camest i will not come regard thyself this will offend them highly myself my conscience and internal peace can they think me so broken so debased with corporal servitude that my mind ever will condescend to such absurd commands although their drudge to be their fool or jester and in my midst of sorrow and heart grief to show them feats and play before their god the worst of all indignities yet on me joined with extreme contempt i will not come my message was imposed on me with speed brooks no delay is this thy resolution so take it with what speed thy message needs i am sorry what this stoutness will produce perhaps thou shalt have cause to sorrow indeed consider samson matters now are strained up to the height whether to hold or break he's gone and who knows how he may report thy words by adding fuel to the flame expect another message more imperious more lordly thundering than thou well wilt bear shall i abuse this consecrated gift of strength again returning with my hair after my great transgression so requite favour renewed 
and add a greater sin by prostituting holy things to idols a nazarite in place abominable vaunting my strength in honour to their dagon besides how vile contemptible ridiculous what act more execrably unclean profane yet with this strength thou serv'st the philistines idolatrous uncircumcised unclean not in their idol worship but by labour honest and lawful to deserve my food of those who have me in their civil power where the heart joins not outward acts defile not where outward force constrains the sentence holds but who constrains me to the temple of dagon not dragging the philistian lords command commands on no constraints if i obey them i do it freely venturing to displease god for the fear of man and man prefer set god behind which in his jealousy shall never unrepented find forgiveness yet that he may dispense with me or thee present in temples at idolatrous rites for some important cause thou needst not doubt how thou wilt here come off surmounts my reach be of good courage i begin to feel some rousing motions in me which dispose to something extraordinary my thoughts i with this messenger will go along nothing to do be sure that may dishonour our law or stain my vow of nazarite if there be aught of presage in the mind this day will be remarkable in my life by some great act or of my days the last in time thou hast resolved the man returns samson this second message from our lords to thee i am bid say art thou our slave our captive at the public mill our drudge and darest thou at our sending and command dispute thy coming come without delay or we shall find such engines to assail and hamper thee as thou shalt come of force though thou wert firmlier fastened than a rock i could be well content to try their art which to no few of them would prove pernicious yet knowing their advantages too many because they shall not trail me through their streets like a wild beast i am content to go master's commands come with a power resistless to such as owe them absolute subjection and for a life who will not change his purpose so mutable are all the ways of men yet this be sure in nothing to comply scandalous or forbidden in our law i praise thy resolution doff these links by this compliance thou wilt win the lords to favour and perhaps to set thee free brethren farewell your company along i will not wish lest it perhaps offend them to see me girt with friends and how the sight of me as of a common enemy so dreaded once may now exasperate them i know not lords are lordliest in their wine and the well-feasted priest then soonest fired with zeal if aught religion seem concerned no less the people on their holy days impetuous insolent unquenchable 
happen what may of me expect to hear nothing dishonourable impure unworthy our god our law my nation or myself the last of me or no i cannot warrant go and the holy one of israel be thy guide to what may serve his glory best and spread his name great among the heathen round send thee the angel of thy birth to stand fast by thy side who from thy father's field rode up in flames after his message told of thy conception and be now a shield of fire that spirit that first rushed on thee in the camp of dan be efficacious in thee now at need for never was from heaven imparted measure of strength so great to mortal seed as in thy wondrous actions hath been seen but wherefore comes old manoa in such haste with youthful steps much livelier than erewhile he seems supposing here to find his son or of him bringing to us some glad news end of section 9 recording by martin geeson in hazelmere surrey section 10 of samson agonistes this librivox recording is in the public domain Recording by Martin Giessen Samson Agonistes by John Milton Section 10 Manoa Chorus Messenger Peace with you, brethren. My inducement hither was not at present here to find my son, by order of the lords new parted hence to come and play before them at their feast i heard all as i came the city rings and numbers thither flock i had no will lest i should see him forced to things unseemly but that which moved my coming now was chiefly to give ye part with me what hope i have with good success to work his liberty that hope would much rejoice us to partake with thee say reverend sire we thirst to hear i have attempted one by one the lords either at home or through the high street passing with supplication prone and father's tears to accept of ransom for my son their prisoner some much averse i found and wondrous harsh contemptuous proud set on revenge and spite that part most reverenced dagon and his priests others more moderate seeming but their aim private reward for which both god and state they easily would set to sale a third more generous far and civil who confessed they had enough revenged having reduced their foe to misery beneath their fears the rest was magnanimity to remit if some convenient ransom were proposed what noise or shout was that it tore the sky doubtless the people shouting to behold their once great dread captive and blind before them or at some proof of strength before them shown 
his ransom if my whole inheritance may compass it shall willingly be paid and numbered down much rather i shall choose to live the poorest in my tribe than richest and he in that calamitous prison left no i am fixed not to part hence without him for his redemption all my patrimony if need be i am ready to forego and quit not wanting him i shall want nothing fathers are wont to lay up for their sons thou for thy son art bent to lay out all sons wont to nurse their parents in old age thou in old age carest how to nurse thy son made older than thy age through eyesight lost it shall be my delight to tend his eyes and view him sitting in the house ennobled with all those high exploits by him achieved and on his shoulders waving down those locks that of a nation armed the strength contained and i persuade me god had not permitted his strength again to grow up with his hair garrisoned round about him like a camp of faithful soldiery were not his purpose to use him further yet in some great service not to sit idle with so great a gift useless and thence ridiculous about him and since his strength with eyesight was not lost god will restore him eyesight to his strength thy hopes are not ill-founded nor seem vain of his delivery and thy joy thereon conceived agreeable to a father's love in both which we as next participate i know your friendly minds and oh what noise mercy of heaven what hideous noise was that horribly loud unlike the former shout noise call you it or universal groan as if the whole inhabitation perished blood death and dreadful deeds are in that noise ruin destruction at the utmost point of ruin indeed methought i heard the noise oh it continues they have slain my son thy son is rather slaying them that outcry from slaughter of one foe could not ascend some dismal accident it needs must be what shall we do stay here or run and see best keep together here lest running thither we unawares run into danger's mouth this evil on the philistines is fallen from whom could else a general cry be heard the sufferers then will scarce molest us here from other hands we need not much to fear what if his eyesight for to israel's god nothing is hard by miracle restored he now be dealing dole among his foes and over heaps of slaughtered walk his way that were a joy presumptuous to be thought yet god hath wrought things as incredible for his people of old what hinders now he can i know but doubt to think he will yet hope would fain subscribe and tempts belief a little stay will bring some notice hither of good or bad so great of bad the sooner 
for evil news rides post while good news baits and to our wish i see one hither speeding an ebrew as i guess and of our tribe o oh, whither shall i run or which way fly the sight of this so horrid spectacle which erst my eyes beheld and yet behold for dire imagination still pursues me but providence or instinct of nature seems or reason though disturbed and scarce consulted to have guided me aright i know not how to thee first reverend manoa and to these my countrymen whom here i knew remaining as at some distance from the place of horror so in the sad event too much concerned the accident was loud and here before thee with rueful cry yet what it was we hear not no preface needs thou seest we long to know it would burst forth but i recover breath and sense distract to know well what i utter tell us the sum the circumstance defer gaza yet stands but all her sons are fallen all in a moment overwhelmed and fallen sad but thou knowest to israelites not saddest the desolation of a hostile city feed on that first there may in grief be surfeit relate by whom by samson that still lessens the sorrow and converts it nigh to joy ah manoa i refrain too suddenly to utter what will come at last too soon lest evil tidings with too rude eruption hitting thy aged ear should pierce too deep suspense in news is torture speak them out then take the worst in brief samson is dead the worst indeed oh all my hopes defeated to free him hence but death who sets all free hath paid his ransom now and full discharge what windy joy this day had i conceived hopeful of his delivery which now proves abortive as the first-born bloom of spring nipped with the lagging fear of winter's frost yet ere i give the reins to grief say first how died he death to life is crown or shame all by him fell thou sayest by whom fell he what glorious band gave samson his death's wound unwounded of his enemies he fell wearied with slaughter then or how explain by his own hands self-violence what cause brought him so soon at variance with himself among his foes inevitable cause at once both to destroy and be destroyed the edifice where all were met to see him upon their heads and on his own he pulled oh lastly over strong against thyself a dreadful way thou took'st to thy revenge more than enough we know 
but while things yet are in confusion give us if thou canst i witness of what first or last was done relation more particular and distinct end of section 10 recording by martin geeson in hazelmere surrey Section eleven of Samson Agonistes. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Martin Geeson. Samson Agonistes by John Milton. Section eleven. Messenger. Chorus. Chorus. Chorus manoa occasions drew me early to this city and as the gates i entered with sunrise the morning trumpets festival proclaimed through each high street little i had dispatched when all abroad was rumoured that this day samson should be brought forth to show the people proof of his mighty strength in feats and games i sorrowed at his captive state but minded not to be absent at that spectacle the building was a spacious theatre half round on two main pillars vaulted high with seats where all the lords and each degree of sort might sit in order to behold the other side was open where the throng on banks and scaffolds under sky might stand i among these aloof obscurely stood the feast and noon grew high and sacrifice had filled their hearts with mirth high cheer and wine when to their sports they turned immediately was samson as a public servant brought in their state livery clad before him pipes and timbrels on each side went armed guards both horse and foot before him and behind archers and slingers cataphracts and spears at sight of him the people with a shout rifted the air clamouring their god with praise who had made their dreadful enemy their thrall he patient but undaunted where they led him came to the place and what was set before him which without help of eye might be assayed to heave pull draw or break he still performed all with incredible stupendous force none daring to appear antagonist at length for intermission's sake they led him between the pillars he his guide requested for so from such as nearer stood we heard as overtired to let him lean a while with both his arms on those two massy pillars that to the arched roof gave main support he unsuspicious led him which when samson felt in his arms with head a while inclined and eyes fast fixed he stood as one who prayed or some great matter in his mind revolved at last with head erect thus cried aloud hitherto lords what your commands imposed i have performed as reason was obeying not without wonder or delight beheld now of my own accord such other trial i mean to show you of my strength yet greater 
as with amaze shall strike all who behold this uttered straining all his nerves he bowed as with the force of winds and waters pent when mountains tremble those two massy pillars with horrible convulsion to and fro he tugged he shook till down they came and drew the whole roof after them with bursts of thunder upon the heads of all who sate beneath lords ladies captains counsellors or priests their choice nobility and flower not only of this but each philistian city round met from all parts to solemnize this feast samson with these immixed inevitably pulled down the same destruction on himself the vulgar only scaped who stood without o oh, dearly bought revenge yet glorious living or dying thou hast fulfilled the work for which thou wast foretold to israel and now liest victorious among thy slain self killed not willingly but tangled in the fold of dire necessity whose law in death conjoined thee with thy slaughtered foes in number more than all thy life had slain before while their hearts were jocund and sublime drunk with idolatry drunk with wine and fat regorged of bulls and goats chaunting their idol and preferring before our living dread who dwells in shiloh his bright sanctuary among them he a spirit of frenzy sent who hurt their minds and urged them on with mad desire to call in haste for their destroyer they only set on sport and play unwittingly importuned their own destruction to come speedy upon them so fond are mortal men fallen into wrath divine as their own ruin on themselves to invite insensate left or to sense reprobate and with blindness internal struck but he though blind of sight despised and thought extinguished quite with inward eyes illuminated his fiery virtue roused from under ashes into sudden flame and as an evening dragon came assailant on the perched roosts and nests in order ranged of tame velatic fowl but as an eagle his cloudless thunder bolted on their heads so virtue given for lost depressed and overthrown as seemed like that self-begotten bird in the arabian woods embossed that no second knows nor third and lay erewhile a hollow coursed from out her ashy womb now teemed revives reflourishes then vigorous most when most unactive deemed and though her body die her fame survives a secular bird ages of lives come come no time for lamentation now nor much more cause samson hath quit himself like samson and heroically hath finished a life heroic on his enemies fully revenged 
hath left them years of mourning and lamentation to the sons of caftor through all philistian bounds to israel honour hath left and freedom let but them find courage to lay hold on this occasion to himself and father's house eternal fame and which is best and happiest yet all this with god not parted from him as was feared but favouring and assisting to the end nothing is here for tears nothing to wail or knock the breast no weakness no contempt dispraise or blame nothing but well and fair and what may quiet us in a death so noble let us go find the body where it lies soaked in his enemy's blood and from the stream with lavers pure and cleansing herbs wash off the clotted gore i with what speed the while gaza is not in plight to say us nay will send for all my kindred all my friends to fetch him hence and solemnly attend with silent obsequy and funeral train home to his father's house there will i build him a monument and plant it round with shade of laurel evergreen and branching palm with all his trophies hung and acts enrolled in copious legend or sweet lyric song thither shall all the valiant youth resort and from his memory inflame their breasts to matchless valour and adventures high the virgins also shall on feastful days visit his tomb with flowers only bewailing his lot unfortunate in nuptial choice from whence captivity and loss of eyes all is best though we oft doubt what the unsearchable dispose of highest wisdom brings about and ever best found in the close oft he seems to hide his face but unexpectedly returns and to his faithful champion hath in place bore witness gloriously whence gaza mourns and all that band them to resist his uncontrollable intent his servants he with new acquist of true experience from this great event with peace and consolation hath dismissed and calm of mind all passion spent end of section 11 recording by martin geeson in hazelmere surrey end of samson agonistes by john milton